When it comes to updating games on Lutris, it can be very hit or miss if things go off without a hitch. I initially encountered an error when attempting to update Baldur's Gate 3 through Lutris when the updater didn't like any of the patch files I pointed it to. To get around this problem, I opted for the most surefire way to resolve the issue and get me back into the game, reinstalling it. This video walks you through updating your GOG copy of Baldur's Gate 3 on the Steam Deck through Lutris. This video was developed over the course of several weeks, during which several game updates rolled out and a multitude of issues were encountered. I have rolled all my findings into this video, and as a result, it is quite dense with nuanced info. I have noted chapters via timestamps in the video description that I recommend you make use of. This video will at times foray into conveying a technical journey of troubleshooting rather than just being a vanilla tutorial. Making more captivating content surrounding traditionally dry technical knowledge is something I strive to do in future videos, and so I experiment with this here, however challenging it may be. I am all ears on constructive criticism and encourage you to leave comments on your thoughts on this format below. Your feedback will be heavily considered for future content for this channel, especially while it's still budding. Lastly, there will inevitably be some gaps in my coverage, and if you happen to notice any gap or can help fill it with any kind of additional information, it would be greatly appreciated if you could add that as a comment below. Now, without further ado, let's get to updating. But first, here's a high-level overview of the steps a cautious and responsible gamer would take when updating a game, especially on Linux where things tend to be a little more involved and tedious. Before even thinking of updating, it's always vital that you back up your save files, then carry out the update followed by validation and verification, and throughout we are bound to encounter all kinds of dead ends and roadblocks that we will need to troubleshoot and work around. One last thing just to cover my tail, I am not responsible for actions taken while following this video that may bring about issues with your system or game installation. Only proceed with the following steps in this video if you are comfortable doing so. I offer no warranty or guarantee this will work for you as things will inevitably change over time with different software versions. Now, with all that out of the way, let's finally begin. The first thing you want to do is back up the game's save files. From the home directory, within the Dolphin file browser, conduct a search for Larian. The result that pops up should be within the comp data directory and should contain your save files. Do note that each reinstallation of the game will change the number directory that is the immediate child of the comp data folder. This is important because this is where your save files reside. For later game versions, the location of save files changed to be located within Home, Deck, Games, GOG, Baldur's Gate 3. The full path is on screen and in the video description below. We want to copy the save files elsewhere on the system, or better yet, to a different drive altogether for safekeeping. A convenient way of doing this is by copying them over to a micro SD card. Next, let's attempt to take the path of least resistance and first try updating the game from the Lutris Update Wizard. You can do this by right clicking on the game tile and selecting update. If you have multiple options to update to, you may have to reattempt via trial and error until one of the updates works. But as a general rule, I found that updating to a future hotfix version for a given patch version works, while trying to update to a different patch version altogether doesn't due to a bug in the Lutris updater. If you want to update to a version that the update wizard provides an error for, I found the reinstallation procedure I cover later as a solid workaround. Just skip to the chapter indicated on screen. Beware though, even if the update appears to go off without a hitch, you aren't out of the woods until you 1. Try running the game and 2. Ensure that you can still see and load your saves. It is possible that the game immediately crashes when attempting to launch. Keep an eye on the play button at the bottom of the screen while launching the game, and if it changes back to play within a few seconds after launching the game, that's how you know a crash occurred. Right click on the game tile and click on show logs. Chances are you'll see a version mismatch error. Truth be told, I was a bit confounded by this until I came across this Reddit thread. A comment by Mark Beard says, just set the wine prefix folder to an empty directory and wine will do the rest. So let's try that. Let's see if there's something we can adjust within the configure panel which we can get to by right clicking on the game tile and clicking on configure. Uh, within the game options tab, there is a field labeled wine prefix. I bet Mr. Mark Bread was referring to this. Uh, I don't exactly know where the other wine prefixes are located and what the proper path convention dictates, so let's just create a new folder within the deck directory. And let's give it a descriptive name, like lutris underscore prefix. Also, within the runner options tab, I set the wine version to 8.13, the latest version I had installed on my system. Oh, and be sure to turn off the enable eSync and enable fsync switches. 
This is done to work around another issue I cover in the resolving non-esync wine version error section of this video that you can skip to if you're curious. Let's save our changes and run the game. Aha, Wine indeed does appear to be handling the rest, as user McBrady mentioned. Click on install on the Wine Mono installer window that appears, then wait for about half a minute for the installation to complete and for the game to launch. But you're not done yet. When the main menu loads, check to see if you're able to load any of your saves. I was surprised to discover I couldn't even though I installed an update through Lutris without uninstalling anything. After digging around some, I discovered that apparently the new install location appears to not be in the comp data directory any longer. See the restoring backup saves sections of this video on how to restore save files. In the event the update wizard does not allow you to update to the desired version, your only real option is to uninstall the game and then reinstall the newer version. The micro SD card can come in handy again if your Steam Deck is running low in internal disk space like mine was. You can download the game installation files to it and then point the Lutris installer to them during the installation process rather than having the installer download them. Just be sure to take the extra step of setting your browser's default download location to the SD card. With that done, you get to slog through the busy work of downloading 30 files. Woohoo! After downloading all files, you are ready for reinstallation. So double check to ensure you have backed up your saved files correctly, and then go ahead and uninstall Baldur's Gate 3 from the Lutris Game Manager. Once uninstalled, right click on the game tile and select install, select GOG auto generated and then make your way through the wizard and at the final screen point the installer to the files you downloaded manually. It's a real drag, I know, but you only need to do this once if you do it correctly. Just be sure to take extra care to ensure the correct file is being pointed to because I haven't tested what happens if there's a mismatch and I don't know if, how, or when the installer fails if a mistake is done during this step. Installation for me using files stored on the micro SD card resulted in a notably slower install time of about 2 hours 20 minutes compared to about an hour and a half from what I recall. When trying to run the game, I encountered an incompatible wine version error. First, I began by clicking around through the settings to see if there's anything obvious I could change. I found an issue on the Lutris GitHub page that mentioned eSync or FSync, but it didn't seem to apply. After hitting my head up against the wall for a bit, I started considering alternative game managers. The Heroic Game Launcher is what I used to run and install my GOG version of The Witcher 3 on the same device, so I figured giving it a shot would be worthwhile. I installed the Heroic Game Launcher to see if using it to install the game would result in the same error, but there was no obvious way to install the game through it. After realizing that the Heroic Game Launcher would not work, I joined the Lutris Discord server in hopes of getting some assistance with the problem. As per their guidelines, I checked the pinned messages first, which led me to a document in the GitHub wiki explaining eSync and allowing me to perform a check to see if my Steam Deck is compatible with it. The check I performed confirmed that my machine was already compatible with eSync, which only added to the confusion as to why it wasn't working. After having seen a message in the pinned comments of the Lutris Discord channel mentioning that 8.13 was the only version of Lutris that should ever be used, given that other versions had a glaring bug in them that forced you to use the system version of Wine, I opted to install it and tried running the game with it selected, but it wouldn't even launch. The play button would merely change to stop for a few seconds before changing back to play, indicating that the program crashed during launch. Opening the logs shows a wine version mismatch error. Since they determined the only wine version to actually run without crashing during launch was the system one of 8.0.2, I needed to figure out how to get around the non-esync wine version error. Fortunately, a little more Google foo presented me with this question on Arcade, which mentioned esync could be turned off from the configure page. Apparently I missed this when scouring through the menus earlier. Turning off that setting and then attempting to run the game presented a similar error complaining about a lack of f-sync compatibility instead. Going back to the settings page, turning off f-sync and then running the game will finally launch the game but you may have to wait a little while for the Larian startup screen to appear. Fortunately though, subsequent runs will launch faster so you may have to be a little more patient when launching the game for the first time. If you initially uninstalled the game, you'll notice that when you get to the main menu, you won't have the option to load. So let's restore those save files that you backed up earlier. We need to start by determining where exactly to copy the save files to. Try navigating to the path shown on screen or labeled as New Path in the description below. If you found it, skip to the next section of this video, Restoring Backed Up Saves, Moving Files Into Place. 
If you can't find it and have the game installed, that means you're on an older version of the game with the save path shown on screen and labeled as Old Path in the description below. Since this path contains a number that varies per installation, it is easiest to search for the location. Search for Larian from within the Dolphin file browser. It's worthwhile to note that the search sometimes may fail to find anything if you conduct the search from outside of the .local directory. In one instance, I tried searching multiple times from the home and root directories with no luck. It wasn't until I conducted the search from the .local directory that yielded expected results. But another time, I was able to successfully conduct a search from the home slash deck folder, so your mileage may vary in this regard as well. However, I determined by far and away the best way to conduct the search for the correct folder to paste the save files to is by running the search from within the comp data directory itself. The comp data directory can be reached from the path shown on screen or from the video description below. You're going to want to look for a subdirectory that contains no save files. You do that by opening the Larian Studios folder, then Baldur's Gate 3, Player Profiles, Public, and then Save Games. If the story folder within Save Games is empty, which is easily determined by a chevron to its left allowing you to open or close it, that's a potential target. Personally, I like to copy the save files over by first removing the empty story directory from the target location. Then the story directory containing the save files can be pasted cleanly within the Save Games folder. Now that you've done all that, you should be able to see your saves from the game's main menu. And there you have it, updating your GOG copy of Baldur's Gate 3 on the Steam Deck through Lutris. Enjoy!